True Underdog, Unleash the Power Within. Jason Waller here with my co-host, John LeBlanc. We've got special guest Mike Valenti here. We're going to hear his story and how we can overcome some objections and how we can better do better our lives going forward of being a true underdog in today's society. Mike, how are you doing today? I'm great. And now we have the audio right. <laughs> yes. I swear. Yes, audio is right. I swear to God. Okay. Well, hey, well, we share the same producer, so maybe that's the issue. <laughs> that might be first problem. That might be Roberto's problem, okay? That might so, be first problem. Hey, so question is, go ahead and share with the uh, listeners exactly, you know, what you're doing, who you are. You know, let, let's hear about Mike Valenti. Yeah, so for people who aren't familiar, it's I do afternoon drive, sports radio, 97 won the ticket. I basically I get yelled at for a living. We talk uh, up until... Recently, we talk about sports. We obviously have more important things going on now. But yeah, I've been doing that since 2004. Okay. Um, it's a different deal than you. I know you've had like several different processes, several different chapters. My career has, luckily, and it's I'm blessed to be in that spot. I've had this one massive chapter of 16 years down here, a couple of years prior to that when I'd left school. But yeah, that's, that's the day-to-day of it. So you've got a successful afternoon drive radio show yep. that I've I've heard when I first moved to Michigan. I was like, who is this guy that is yelling and pissed off and bad mouthing? Say what you said to me the first time we met. Say what you said when you told me what you thought when you were listening. You go, why is this guy such a prick? I did. Yeah, I did say that. And you know what? You're you're kind of like that in person, but in a good way. At least you're honest. It's, it's more real. endearing. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's you're real. He, you are a huge Lions fan. I am. You you give the Lions That's some shit. That's his fault. That's not mine. <laughs> yeah, I am a Lions fan. Guilty as charged. Uh, but things that you say are real. That's yeah. what I appreciate. Too many times on radio or anything, people sugarcoat everything. Yeah. And they want you to buy in so you can just like them. Uh, with your show, it's real. So you get people pissed off, Colin, giving you the other side of it. But I'll tell you why. And I, I think, and again, this is one where we could go down the wormhole and we don't have time. It's like we're living in, a, in an age now where so many people are compromised. They're compromised, whether it be through standard business relationship, whether it be through personal relationship or just broad based agenda. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you're going to get a blend of those three big things. I'm different and I've always been this way. I just don't care. I'm not interested in relationships with teams. I'm not interested in relationships with athletes. I'm not interested in anything really other than making sure my listeners and my clients are happy. That's it. Not a key is clients know what they're getting with me. If you think it's going to be a cheerleader routine, it's not. Um, if I don't use your product, I'm not going to say I use your product. If I right. do, I will. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. And as far as the content, the meat and potatoes of the show, I think the advantage for me is I, I wasn't from Detroit and I don't go on the air and lie to my listeners. I'm not a Tiger fan. I'm a Yankee fan. Now, your team... That's unfortunate, by the way. <laughs> now, go ahead. Nah, well, listen, it is the first decade in like 80 years that we didn't win a World Series, so this was oh, a geez. down decade for us. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But no, I'm just saying, like, it's if your team wins games, I'll be nice. And if they don't, I won't. And I think people have come to appreciate that because all that you get basically in sports media now are propagandists and lemmings and and, and apologists. And I just, that ain't for me. That's not what sports is about. Sports is supposed to be entertaining. When it ceases to be entertaining, we have a problem here. So it's very, very easy for me. You're basically saying they need to give you a better product to talk about. I would help, wouldn't and you? Then, yeah, and then, so you don't have to get so fired up about it. I think it. that's a big part of it. Right. And I think a lot of what goes on in, in the world, but a lot of what goes on in sports is, is total BS. I don't know if this is PG or PG-13. No, you can say what you want. Oh, it's bullshit. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you see these teams creating their own networks. You see teams hiring their own writers. That's propaganda. That's, yeah. that's not honesty. There's not a shred of honesty in that. So I think... For what we do, I think it's incredibly important to not do that. Right. And unfortunately, if you go around the country, you're going to hear a lot of hosts doing exactly what I do that are compromised. And it is what it is. I've been fortunate. And part of it is I've earned the right to do what I do. And it's yeah. not going to change because if, if I'm asked to change it, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. I don't need it. What? Go ahead. How'd you get into this? Like, where, how'd this all evolve? And yeah. why, why have you stayed for, what, 16 years, you said? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's... Okay, honestly, you're going to laugh, but the the way it all started was driving around with my dad in the summer, you know, summer of 93, I think it was, and Will Barry Bonds signed with the Yankees, and it was a whole summer of that conjecture, and you hear the voice from the box, 
and I grew up listening. The station out of New York was an old blowtorch AM station, the fan, 660. And you would get it where I grew up, about an hour and a half north, two hours north up the Hudson River. So I, immediately it was different. It wasn't the newspaper. It wasn't Sports Center. It wasn't highlights. It was this live, fluid thing, and people got a say. And you just kind of couldn't help but get into it. And, and the debate there would then go to, you know, my, my then 13-year-old self and my dad. So I knew right away that's what I wanted. I never wanted to be a television star. I don't think I had the nose for TV anyways. <laughs> I never wanted to. I didn't want to be a writer. You got a for radio, you right? Go yeah. Bleach blonde. I mean, <laughs> it depends what angle. But yeah, no. Everyone's it's, hating on the bleach get, blonde get hair. Larry Rodman. The fans will tell you, <laughs> Jason. The bleach blonde hair is <laughs> hot, baby. It's hot. Jason, it's totally natural. Right, it looks right. beautiful. It is natural. <laughs> no, but it, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now, the getting into it. The, the cliff notes is it's all I wanted to do. No one in my family had ever gone to college, so I didn't have any resource of how do I do this or help me with the process. I went to a pretty lousy school. We didn't exactly have a guidance counselor. Um, you talking about young school, high school. Oh, no, not, not stay. He loves to stay. But no, I mean it, it's it's. I just literally, you will laugh. I went to the bookstore back when those existed. Mm -hmm. I bought a Princeton Review Guide. I found the top ten journalism programs in the country. And I applied to the ones that I could remotely afford. Late 90s, you couldn't just borrow sure. in ether. So right. I, you know, I, I applied to all the standards. Syracuse, Boston University, because I grew up a Howard Stern fan. Um, Love Mi Howard Stern. Michigan State was on there, and I'd already liked State as far as athletics, because I was just a weirdo. I was a different kid. Uh, everyone on my block. Old school, New York, everyone's a Roman Catholic, uh, Irish Catholic. They all like Notre Dame. You know, Michigan was huge where I was. Sure. But, um, yeah, you just, you know what you want. I didn't know you didn't need a journalism degree. There was no one there to tell me. So I got a degree that I never intended on using to mm -hmm. just get where I wanted to go. Yeah. I didn't realize that until later years. That was one of those oopsie moments. Oh, yeah. um, what was the degree you got? Journalism, which I've come to hate because the state of journalism is a total disaster. But that's probably a, a separate pod. But that's that's the long and short of it. It was always a singular myopic focus i just wanted to do exactly what i'm doing yeah when you first got on the radio here in, in michigan yeah. and you know i've only been here since summer of 18 right so not that long but it, everyone's like you got to hear this mike valenti guy and it's it's the number one show <laughs> nay i'm not blowing smoke out there i mean it's appealing and people are attracted yeah. to hearing it but then you just recently launched the podcast so kind of walk us through the story when you sure. first started in radio and what that was like to build that brand and, 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 and yeah. your show. And then now going off to do, it's, it's it two podcasts now you're doing? During football season, we go to two. That's because right. Because we have cash the ticket. But all right. So, A, I wanted to do those in upwards of four to five years ago. Okay. And I had to fight our old company. I had to fight the company that bought us. It's a constant struggle because you get people that are set in their ways and digital frightens them. Um I have major opinions on that, but I think I would bore people to death if we went down that route. How it all started, though, I mean, I was doing radio in Lansing, where um, Michigan State's like right down the street in East Lansing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was, I sent two demo tapes. The natural progression is you just send a couple demo tapes out right. to Detroit. Like, where else? You know, Grand Rapids had no appeal to me. And one station didn't have anything. They might down the road. The other... Uh, which was at the time my station was an AM station. They were kind of getting ready to have this whole turnover. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because, you know, again, 2003, it's a different time. You know, you weren't FaceTiming with people. You right. weren't, there was no... Cell phones uh, were fairly new. Yeah, I mean, you were, were lucky you could send a text. So yeah. um, it was funny through the conversations um, with the program director at that time, he had this presumption that I was like 40 years old and I was 23. So it's then, that voice. It's oh, yeah, the right. Voice. Right. Yeah. But no, we finally met for the first time, and he was looking around the room, and I knew what he looked like. And he was, like, flabbergasted when he sat down. And I'm like, look, we're here. I'm like, if you don't want to hire me because I'm not 40, then let's at least have lunch, and we can figure it out. And it was kind of me and my former partner, Terry Foster. We were the last ones to get put together. You know, the whole station got put together. We were kind of like the uninvited guest. We were that last show. You've got this 23-year-old nobody. You know, you got a writer from Detroit mm -hmm. who's twice my age, 
and we're just going to throw these two together and see what happens. You're going to break your chair. <laughs> I, was, hey, I was adjusting it so I could, I could sit up a little bit more. But no, that's, that's how it came together. And then building the brand, I think one thing is Detroit is different than a lot of cities. Mm -hmm. Every city has its own provinciality, right? That they don't exactly mm -hmm. love outsiders unless it's transient, like in Atlanta, in L.A., a Vegas, what have you. But cities like Detroit, it's 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 very provincial, and it's not this welcoming place for outsiders. And you know, I think there's a pretty high degree of failure in what we do. You might get a shot, you might fail. Um, it's not like people are going to be super welcoming and be like, "Who the hell is this asshole with a New York accent who's 23?" You know. So that was part of the biggest thing. It takes time to build that. But I knew right away, and Terry knew. We had something. We were different. You know, it was kind of this odd couple thing. Um, it was, we were saying different things. We were, we sounded different than the other shows. Right. And we just kind of put it together and we got some traction. And then the Tigers got good and that helped. You know, you got to remember when you buy these really expensive properties that are sports teams, when they suck, you're taking away the oxygen. You're taking away the organic I'm going to turn the radio on because I'm pissed off about this decision from last night's game. When teams are dreadful like they are now, you're in a totally different space. People aren't even paying attention. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Tigers getting good was like a spark. You know, it was like kindling and lighting a fire. And then you had this show, which was me at 23, 24, where I was even more of a, a wacko and more incendiary. And I made plenty of mistakes. And then you had this kind of more calming influence of Terry, who was, God, I think Terry was in his early 40s at the time, maybe mm -hmm. mid-40s. And we just kind of put it together. And then when you get a foothold, then you're like, okay, you know, like they're not going to pull the plug on us. And now how do we do more? How do we get mm -hmm. more? And, and that's where a person like me having... I've always had a massive chip on my shoulder. I've tried to work on it. <laughs> you? No, <laughs> come on. No, but it comes from the way you grow up, and it comes from kind of when you're in this line of work, nobody really wants you to succeed. I mean, I, right. I think anyone who says that, it's kind of a bullshit rap. Like, nobody wants you to succeed because it means you're going to take their job. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy who yeah. is doing mornings isn't going to be like, you know, bro, I'm really rooting for you. It's like, yeah, but you do realize if I thrive, it's going to come at the cost of you. Mm -hmm. And then you get fans, and you get media in this in in this town and nobody wants the new guy to do well so i right. think you know once you get a foothold it's good but you don't change i've never really changed i'm still i'm still me like it's it's i'm i'm hyper competitive i'm maniacal about it i care and i still want to produce something really really good on a daily basis like i, I hate the term licking the stamp it drives me out of my goddamn mind <laughs> Like when you see people that are freeloading, you know, sure. but I don't get to control their path. I control my own. So once we built the brand and once we got a shot to do afternoons, then then it really just took off. Then we flipped it to FM, where most radio stations that have a clue now who do sports are doing. And then all of a sudden you're kind of opening your world to a younger demographic, to more people. And this was, what, 07, 08. And, you know, even now, think about AM radio. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's a relic, not to be disrespectful, but like, who the hell's listening to AM? Not many. So once you got there, then it was this explosion. And then before you really realize it, you're a part of people's day. You know, radio is such a habitual act. It's, mm -hmm. it's this thing of, it is habit. I mean, even in my own life, I have my own radio or now digital habits of what I'm going to listen to when and where I consume it, how I consume it. And, you know, you get to a point, I wanted to grow it. And this was probably over five years ago. And I, I just, you run into a fight because terrestrial radio has viewed digital as the enemy. And it's not. It's a growth element. You know, we in, we in radio have a bad habit of acting that people are going to come to us for the candy. And you have to understand the world is changing now. We have to take our candy and put it on every platform. Mm -hmm. Every shelf and every store, mm -hmm. and and make it accessible for people to go and enjoy it. It's a good way to lay that out because it's exactly right. It's the truth. Yes, it is. And certain companies are doing a better job than others. And I, I listen. I'm trying. I like. I have a different model in that the pods I do are exclusive, meaning nothing on those pods is going to be on the show. Nothing on the show is on the pods. There's a there's a way to do it. Like mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to use the term artful, but like there's a there's a methodology to it where you can do this without cannibalizing yourself. 
you can put content out there that's not going to eat away at your ratings. Mm -hmm. You just have to do it right. So we had kind of gotten to that point. We wanted to do it. It got tabled. Then there was a, you know, a merger where our company got bought. Now I got to start all over with new people. Pitch it. Mm -hmm. Ah, and then, and then it's red tape. And then, and then before you know it, you're arguing about stuff like, naming rights and i'm like look i don't give a shit what it's called you could call it the the the, the happy action fun time pod let's just do this <laughs> thing every day you're waiting you're getting left behind the digital you know digital yeah. landscape is so explosive so i just wanted to get in there get some content out grow it is it everything i want no but it's a process and it's a slow one and i think if if anyone knows it you do you know building a business whether it's a new digital product whether it's a new offering within your existing brand or whether it's a new brand in some total, there's no substitution for time. No, the life's never to. an elevator. No. You have to take the steps. You, no. There's no fast no. secret path to get to yeah, the no top. Doubt. It, you may go through four, stepping. two to three at fast, that's correct. but then three to four might take that's some correct. time. Yeah. It is not going to be this linear thing. And that's, we're going to work to grow it more. And, and again, there's, there's going to be certain limiters working for a big company versus working for yourself. You know, obviously, you working for yourself, you running your company, you want to do a pod, you create a pod. Mm -hmm. You decide all your platforms. You decide your distribution model. I have to work through certain channels. Some of it's good and some of it's bad. So that's kind of the, the frustration point when you get to a certain point. Well, you've really got a good product. I mean, I've listened, you know, to the podcast. Obviously, I'm a fan of the show. You know, let's talk about a couple things of in today's world that you, you don't have sports to talk about now. Right. And right. I had some of the listeners and the and the Facebook and Instagram folks that were live asking questions like, why is Mike always aggravated and things like that? So, you know, and you, rightfully so, yeah. you mentioned sports are bad here. It's easy to be aggravated to talk yeah. about. It. What do you think now, the way the world is today with this virus? And yeah. look, this t t we all can agree this isn't permanent. This is a temporary thing. But what's that going to look like for you now? Well, How I do mean, you adjust? I think it's interesting because when you're a sports guy. You get pigeonholed, you get cornered, talk sports. But the reality is, I mean, all of us are grown ass men. We have interests. We have, we're adults, you know, yeah. we're, we're husbands, fathers, we're someone's son, you know, mm -hmm. nephew, uncle, whatever. Your interests evolve. And it was, it was funny, you know, I was recently somewhere and somebody's like, you know, you're a lot different in person than what I hear on the air. And I'm like, well, would you expect a trial lawyer to be the way they are? prosecuting someone at home with their wife no i mean it's i have lots of other interests so i think in times like this the good part is you're free of that box you're yeah. free of be a sports guy you're free of talk sports you can get into some other stuff i mean look this is this is an evolving thing this is something where everyone's going to go on this process together because our lives are going to change for the foreseeable for future yeah i i think I think the way that we work is going to change. I think the way that we communicate is going to change. Yep. And I certainly, look, I have to deliver a product that's going to be compelling. And on, on whatever level I can make it compelling, it's got to be there. My, my job's not stopping. It's just changing. So I think, obviously, if you want to know the literal plan I've sketched out, it'll be, look, if the NFL calendar stays intact you've got free agency coming up here in a couple of weeks you've got the nfl draft and obviously i don't think the draft's going to be the draft mm -hmm. i don't think you're gonna have a quarter of a million people in vegas anytime no. soon but if it's a tv only you know 1983 event and there's only 30 people in the room um i think we'll have that as a a, a foundation i think this this pandemic and the handling of it and where we go as a society becomes a, a daily thing and then yeah people want to escape you're going to be not trapped. I don't want to say trapped in your home. That's fear mongering, but we're going to be spending more time at home. Yeah. You know what? I like Netflix. Yeah. You know, I got a PlayStation. Like we'll talk yeah. about stuff. You have PlayStation over Xbox. Yeah. I made yeah, that switch a long that. time ago. Yeah. No, I got friends who were in that business and it was a decision where if I didn't get it, I wouldn't get to talk to them as much. Well, you know, you a go. lot of my boys live all over the country. I don't know if you've heard Detroit, not necessarily a hotbed for employment. So like a lot of my college friends had to take off. So right. no, but like, I, I don't view this as a positive. I just view it as different and it gives right. me an opportunity to do something different. Now ask me in two, three, four weeks, how much I enjoy different. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. I don't know where it's going. That's the problem. You know, I would say 
the, everything you're saying is is 100 percent accurate and we do have to adjust to the change even our organization you know we we're pretty blessed because it's a one-on-one -on -one sales meeting right we're not going to places where there's 75 or 250 people right? sure. we're not it's unfortunate for people that are hosting concerts or churches mm -hmm. and schools that's kind of the the scary thing but for us we continue to go on but it is different it's like i'm going to be more cautious we're doing elbows instead of hands and yeah. you know it's so new in that change that's going on but it's really a breath of fresh air to hear that, hey, you know, in what you're doing, you see that, hey, life still goes on, work still goes on. It's just a little different. I think, I, you know, like I said, I try not to operate in cliche, but I, I do think that like at every turn, you can choose to look at something and it can be this obstacle or it can be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity where I'm going to have to be better. I mean, yeah. straight up. I'm not it's gonna, a test. not going to be yeah. able to bullshit my way through four hours a day. I'm going to have to be better. My crew's got to be better. Roberto, you hear that? Um, <laughs> Roberto, you got to be better. Out. You couldn't <laughs> even get this thing started <laughs> earlier. Roberto. <laughs> was zoned out. But I, I but think... you're, so you're doing this from home now. That's like a huge change. Is, yeah. that, is that what you're talking about? Or are there no. other things that you're, you're no, going to have to work around? No, I'm talking just content. I'm talking, yeah, listen, yeah. we're not going to have the ability for me to trigger audio the way I normally do. We're not going right. to have the ability. Like, me and my guys, we have very good visual cues and just by looking at someone you know what they're asking for that's true we're right? gonna lose all yeah that. you will um the ability to kind of have that face-to-face -face bus chops react it's going to be different like there's, there's just no other way around it and i think for other shows it might be different around the country locally whatever it may be you know if you got two guys who only talk to each other maybe it's not so different but i involve my guys like mm -hmm. i've got a very Howard Stern, you know, Dan Patrick model where like, I like having my guys behind the glass empowered. I think we're better together. Mm -hmm. I think I work with really talented guys and I like, they have carte blanche. I want them to do what they want to do. And you know, that's, it's not going to be that way for a few weeks. It's going to be a little tougher. You know, that's where you start stumbling over each other and it's not great. The subject matter is going to be different. It's going to force people to get outside the comfort zone. And then really the, the I think the biggest pressure is going to be, I have an immense responsibility that no, I'm not a, a doctor. I'm not a contagious medicine expert. I'm, I'm not a policymaker. But I don't want to be a part of the problem, which is the, the right. fear-mongering and the panic-selling and, and the bullshit artists. I have to parse information. I have to make sure I'm getting it from the right source. I have to make sure what I tell my listeners is helping and not being a part of the problem. So there's a certain burden there where you got to take it serious. It's the same as sports, though. It's like I try not to operate in that hot take space. Right. The things I say, I reason, I, I back up and I try to right. use, if they're not facts, they're going to be things that are very hard to argue. I think it's just, it's the same skill set, art form, whatever you want to call it. It's just going to be a different Different genre. topics. Yeah, yeah, big time. Just More serious response. ones for sure. Right. So, you know, what I've really gathered from, from some of your story that I think the listeners can, can, can grasp and appreciate, learn from is, you know, here's a, a kid from New York that is going to a city that really doesn't like new newbies, you know, that no, they don't like outsiders. I get that. Yeah. Right. Detroit's like that. That's, that's what I actually love about Detroit. After you're kind of in, you're in, it's like, am it's I? us versus the world. I think you have some love. I still get yeah. the occasional go back to New York and people don't right, realize right. Well, you're lived, the, I've lived hey, here but you need than haters. I was ever there. Everybody needs haters, right? Oh, sure. So, but I think that you, you come in here and you took a chance, you know, you're going to school and then you're sending your demo out. You're, you're taking risks. Yeah. To, to better yourself and do things. And a lot of our listeners out there, they could be going through some things right now where they're scared to take that risk. Yeah. They're scared for failure and rejection. They're scared to be told no. And you're like, what do I got to lose? They're just going to tell me no, I'm just going to send it. And then they're scared to do that interview that you did where he was looking at you because you're yeah. young and he, he, you could tell there was prejudgment there. And I know I've been there before. I've There's jobs I had I should have been promoted and yeah. didn't because of age, gender, race, whatever, right? Yeah. That happens all, all the time. but. You were like, no, let's sit and do lunch and see where this thing goes. And yeah, you basically but... took the bull by the horns. And I mean, you really wrote your own destiny. You were not scared of rejection and you took a chance. Well, and it, it's okay. So it's, it's a fear is the safe space. I right. think a lot of people, it's, it's easier to be scared. You shut down and you just swim in that fear. And it's just easier because you never have to actually do anything. You're scared right. of doing anything. I think for me, it took a long time. I wasted a lot of my 20s where I would do these things that you can't be afraid to fail, but then it would consume me about failing. I would still do it, battle through it, and it was just this massive emotional tax. It was an emotional mm -hmm. tax on 
relationships. It was mm-hmm. a tax on family. It was a tax on coworkers. You know, I've, I finally, you, you turn a corner and I think it's so much about your, your mental state, your mental game, your mindset is you turn a corner where you just stop giving a fuck. You really do. That's true. You know, and, and basically damn near when I turned 30, it just kind of was like, all right, I can't have the next decade be like this one. I'm having massive success. I'm, I'm doing everything I ever dreamed I was going to be doing. And I'm still not totally happy because I'm constantly worried about how will this topic be perceived or how will this go over? And it's like, what are you doing? You know, you've basically got damn near a decade of credibility. You're doing it. Fuck it. Just go. And I've really worked hard over the last several years. You got to work on yourself. You got to work on the five inches between your ears. It's either going to be your greatest expansion plan or your greatest limiter. So now I think I'm able to do the stuff you're talking about because I'm just very centered and I, I've got this mindset where you're going to deal with stuff every day. If you're mm-hmm. building a business, and whether it's the business I've built by day or side businesses I build at night, you better love losing. You don't love losing. You're never going to enjoy the winning and you're never going to understand why you had to lose yeah. so much. And that's, that's the stuff where, no, I don't, I don't worry about failing anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, if I launch this pod and it doesn't work or who cares? Like what, in the grand scheme of things, who gives a shit? At least you're taking a chance. Yeah, though. I always if, say, you, if you don't swing, you can't hit it. Exactly. So I think that's the biggest key and it's, it's not easy. It's hard. I, I mean, I wish I had started really working on me and really understanding things more, but it's like, it's like anything else. We all like, damn, you know, when, when we went back to college, if I knew then what I know now, yeah, it's right. part of your journey. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a better 10 years than the prior 10 years. That's for damn sure. I think that's the biggest key too. you think about it as, as long as you can see where you've been and where you're at now and you're still chasing something, you know, everything's Always. about the chase. You, once you get comfortable, you wither away. Yeah, once you're that's... good where you're at, you wither away. You got to have something well, that's, to chase. That's where there's a frustration because, right. you know, people be like, well, look, you got your show to number one and you've stayed there. And I'm like, it, it doesn't matter. I want to do more. Right. And that's, again, it's, and I don't think I make any secret of it. I talk about it on the air, but that's where like frustration sets in. And then you start battling your, your company and you're like, look, I want to do more. So what, it, what's, what's there, what's out there. So yeah, I mean, I'll take a swing at the podcast stuff and I'll tell you, Hey, let's create this gambling show and let's try this. There's, there's always room for more. I think if you're, if you're emotionally right and you're mentally on task, I think you have so much more capacity than you realize. I think you have the ability to do more. It becomes almost like um, an incinerator and a conveyor belt. The incinerator never backs up. You just keep churning and burning. You take whatever comes on that belt and you go. And I think I've reached a point in my life now in my, my late 30s where I'm, I'm really operating at a better efficiency and a better kind of speed. And I'm able to just take whether it's outside stuff that mm-hmm. I have to handle as an adult that my listeners don't give a shit about, nor right. should they. I'm paid to entertain. I, I dance mm-hmm. for dollars. I, I make sure I entertain you. <laughs> dance for dollars. But no, I mean, John, hey, John was dancing for dollars Dude, last let's night. Let's not bring it up. Let's not bring it Leave up. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I think you have to shut out the outside noise. I think it's part of the reason I just quit social media years ago. It's not an issue of caring what people think. It's just all bullshit. Suck shit. It's, 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 it's just wasted energy. I mean, I I just found being myopic, doing the show, I know my employer's happy, I know my audience is happy, I know my clients are happy. Outside of that, none of it really matters. And I'm not one of the egomaniacs, like I didn't do this to become famous, that was never really a part of the equation, you could ask any of the guys who know me, I just, I'd rather be off to the side. I turned down interviews, I mean I did this because I like you and you know, we've gotten to know each other and I said, yeah, I'll do it for you. I, I turned down nine. No, it's, I'm not, I'm not bullshit. It's just, I turned down 90 of these. Mm-hmm. I have no interest. I like to go to work, kill it, go home, work on other side passion projects or things I'm doing and then be a husband and relax. That's my deal. Like I'm very easy. I'm not in it and, for the other and shit. Too many times, you know, we, we were talking about this with a couple of the NFL athletes we had earlier this season on. People like look at you as, oh, you're just you're just this radio person. You're just the guy on the radio. Right. And they forget that that's your job. Outside of that, you've got you just mentioned passions. Oh yeah. Wife. Other things you want to do. There's sure. real problems, real things going on that people sometimes forget. They just go, Oh, he's on the radio and that you're just that figurehead. Yeah. They don't realize that every one of us have a real issues, real life obstacles, you know, 
family problems. Oh, I build different on that. things, right? I, I think, so it's important. I think it's a societal thing. I don't think it's just if you're an athlete or a public figure. I think that just exacerbates the general right. tone that we have as human beings now is we don't give a shit about the guy next to us. We don't treat our fellow man the way we should treat them. Sure. So naturally, when you put someone out in the public eye or you put someone out there who has a name, all that does is just exacerbate mm -hmm. that general tone. And look, ultimately, I think it's it, it, social media is a huge part of it. I don't know if you want to go down that road or not. I just think we're going to look back at social media and we are going to shudder at the damage it did to society. And that might be in 10 years, 20 years. I'll just tell you this. Look at where bullying is gone. Look at where youth suicide is gone. Look at where the tribalism in this country is gone. And you can directly trace it to social media. And I'm telling you, it's affected the way, just like you talked about how the pandemic going on is going to alter us, mm -hmm. the, our methodologies of doing business. The, social media has, I think, irreparably damaged how we interact with each other. You know, you, you see husbands and wives going to dinner and they're not even looking at each other because they're both on their goddamn phone. Mm -hmm. You That's got people true. who never pick up the phone to talk to anybody. They just want to d -d 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 fucking text. It drives me mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Um, and then, then you go to the worst end of it, which is it's, it's just ad hominem warfare yeah. on each other. So that's a, probably a whole separate issue, but. You giving that up in your field, giving up social media. That's, yeah. that's a huge thing. I mean, everybody. Yeah markets and advertises on social media and you're just like you're against the grain you're like nope done i'm gonna get out of it, it is that's i actually nuts. i gotta be honest nuts. i think i had just gotten to a point and like i like i said i mean this is probably now seven years ago maybe i just got to a point where i stopped caring and like it wasn't an issue of like calling the wambulance but like i think it was christmas eve and this was back when i had twitter and it was like yeah i hope your whole fucking family dies in a fire or something like that i'm like all right it's Christmas Eve. Now, is that really the road we want to go down? And I, it was, the, I literally, it's like the last thing, and I just went, mm. I'm done. Fuck it. I hope that guy feels bad. What a prick, right? <laughs> what Doesn't hell? matter. His name was Somebody Jason Waller. Bitch slap that guy. Oh, I think, yeah, it was from Jay Waller. Oh, do you know this Charlotte, guy? Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but it, I think the other thing, too, is it's, it's like anything else. If you give up smoking, if you give up sugar, if you give up social media, Get past that withdrawal syndrome, and you start to realize, wow, there's all you gain control. There's all you take it back. And gain that's control. Exactly what I wanted to do is I don't care what my company wants. I don't care what's expected of me from a from a public viewpoint. My product is still my product. They're gonna take my product, chop it up in a bunch of little pieces, and go use it anyways. Mm -hmm. People will get what they want from me. You don't get any more of me. That's how it was. Basically, my viewpoint. I'm done. There is no more of me. You're going to get two to six, and that's it. I have enough confidence in what I've, I've done, what I'm doing, and what I'm going to do. I don't need it. And all that, all that happened moving on down the line was getting more popular, more successful. And what you realize is that world is still going on every minute of every hour of every day. Mm -hmm. And I haven't partaken in it in damn near seven it's years. pretty cool. And guess, and guess what? Really cool. I'm still cashing checks, and people are probably still telling me to throw myself off a bridge. You just don't <laughs> so, have to see it. Well, that's the whole, to, but that's, that's the whole, the whole, whole principle yeah. of it is you don't have to internalize it. You don't have to, you don't have to play this game of poker. You can play a different table game. When you cut the noise and you shrink your circle of, of the people, you actually give a shit what they have to say, whether it's in business, whether it's your personal life. I think things just become a lot clearer, and I think that the, the dialogue you get becomes a lot more real and valuable. Everything else is just white noise. It's just like a light show. That's all it is. I would agree. Well, hey, we're running out of time, Mike. I appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, you want to tell everybody real quick that the two podcasts you got going out? Yeah, sure. Um, one is always aggravated. That comes out every Wednesday if Roberto does his job appropriately. <laughs> and then um, we will bring back Cash the Ticket during the late summer. It's college football, pro football, all handicapping, betting. Getting in on that sports betting craze that's happening. They just yes. legalized it here in yeah, Michigan. And then all the sports are going to go away. <laughs> and, all and all the sports, sports go away. So let me ask you this. One <laughs> last thing before you go. Yeah, of course. But you're a Giants fan. Yeah. We're gone. Who are the Lions taking? Give me the top five picks. Well, your mock draft right now, one through five. Do I get to do what I want to do if I ran each team? Or are you talking about a reality one? We'll do both. Oh, Christ. All right. You, there you go. All right. Reality first. I would reality guess, first. I would guess Burrow to the Bengals, Ohio kid. Bengals are run like a lemonade stand. They just yep. care about business. So Burrow won. 
I still think Chase Young goes too. I do. Uh, DC kid, DN, Rivera, defensive coach. They've got a really good interior D-line. Need the edge guy. I think Chase Young is is like a Von Miller type guy. I think at three, the Lions go full on Lions and do something stupid and take like a corner like Jeff Okuda. And I like him, but you don't draft corners in the top three. At four, I think the, I think the Giants will go full Gettleman and do something equally stupid and take a positionless player like Isaiah Simmons. And then I think the Dolphins end up the big winner getting my guy Tua. Now, if I get to run things, Burrow goes number one. If I'm the Skins, I still take Chase Young. If I'm the Lions, I take Tua. It's not an anti-Stafford thing. It's that you've had him for 11 years. He's only got a couple of years left sure. on the deal. You can set up the next decade of your franchise. You're never going to be as bad as you were last year, all jokes aside. When you're this high in the draft, there's only a couple things I take. A quarterback or an elite pass rusher. Outside of that, you got to show me an Orlando Pace, Jonathan Ogden type offensive lineman. I can't sit there and take a corner. I can't take Isaiah Simmons. I'm not interested in Derrick Brown at three. Everyone screams, trade down, trade down, trade down. To do what exactly? Have you looked at Bob Quinn's draft record? You're handing a machine gun to a baby. Like, oh, here, get all these picks. What's it going to do with them? Give you the latest T's Tabor, Jelani Tavai, you know, and even the guys he hits on. Nobody wants to be here. So I, I think you got to be careful moving down when you're staring a star in the face. So at the and time, you feel Tua is a star. I love Tua. And at the time of this taping, his medicals have been pristine. Sure. We, we were supposed to get another look and see a pro day and watch the, 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 move, you know, the movement, the flexibility, the throwing. Who knows what's going to happen with that? But at the time we're taping this, I still do. Yes. Okay. I like how he brought through that in there to make sure. Uh-huh. Well, I think it's important. Yeah, it is. They, <laughs> Jesus. We're taping this at the uh, first week of March, second week of March. All right, so thank you. We appreciate your of time, course. Mike. Thank you for coming on the podcast. That's a wrap here. True underdog. Bam.